Secretary. Uh, <coughs> I should tell you, I, I think I should have remained like a legend on her shelf because I brought the wrong copy of my, uh, of my address. So uh, I'll wing it. Uh, I didn't know Josie Zukin in person, but uh, that led me to uh, open and finally devour the uh, wonderful book written on him by Douglas Doug Smith. And I commend it to you for anyone who hasn't read it. Uh, I met this uh, delightful, uh, committed man of genuine integrity who uh, never held formal political power, but uh, in many respects, I think, accomplished more than some of us who supposedly did. Uh, I was asked to uh, bring a provincial perspective to the issues of transparency and accountability at City Hall. So uh, uh, first I, uh, I consulted my friend Howard Pauley, uh, who's always generous with, uh, with email responses. And uh, I think I was asked, uh, were there tools that a provincial government, which of course passed the City of Winnipeg Act, and uh, as we're reminded in today's papers, the Municipal Act that they think is badly out of date, conflict of interest comments. Um, the, uh, and, and Howard's response, he didn't seem to answer the question I thought I had put to him, but he gave me a lot of other concepts. He focused on um, accountability and transparency in the internal structure of government. Now, as you know, provincial government is uh, partisan, so you have a, a, a quite different structure than you have at City Hall which I presume is a, a, a consensus building, uh, non-partisan, at least allegedly, uh, body of people. So in, in a sense, it's quite different. But in um, commenting on internal, uh, 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 internal transparency and accountability, Howard uh, made a point of, of all the structures that, that he felt he had initiated and supported that your uh, caucus members uh, all felt involved and, and informed as to what went on and had a say, uh, particularly in the uh, legislative side in the development of legislation. Uh, in the external field, the main thing he focused on was the importance of prior consultation whenever you were initiating something new that uh, to put put something out to the public before it was fully formed uh, and you know you might just might improve on it from the input that you would get but it would also give you an opportunity to present the the, uh, pro the problem you're trying to solve the, the real intent of the legislation and hopefully develop consensus before it was finally released and I thought that was a very good idea Thinking generally about transparency and accountability, I thought they were words that fit very well into the uh, more recent label of being plastic. Like, they mean different things to different people. Uh, you can ask, accountable to whom? Uh, transparent, uh, why? And 100% transparent, uh, to whom? So uh, I started to think a bit about the concept of transparency, and I thought of it on a personal level. I don't believe anyone is required to be 100% uh, transparent to other people. Uh, we're all entitled to that s small uh, inner space where we can be our own counsel. So uh, applying it more broadly, I thought it's more on a continuum. Uh, you're transparent. Uh, at a certain time when you're developing policy. Uh, you're accountable uh, certainly to the people that vote you in, but uh, also to the general public. And of course, uh, the other uh, elephant in the room, if you like, is the uh, to the media, through the media. Uh, I'll have more to say about that later because uh, I know government <coughs> often has ambiguous attitudes towards the media and vice versa. Um, Thinking further, I thought, uh, really, uh, can uh, democratic political life exist 
without uh, a fair degree of transparency and accountability. Certainly the democratic end of it requires it far more and in the, failure, in the, in the uh, absence of transparency and accountability you can veer quite readily over to the, shall we say, fascist or authoritarian uh, side of the political spectrum, which is really worrying. I don't mean to allege that City Hall has <laughs> veered that far, uh, but uh, it's been more in that direction the, uh, compared to the era when, uh, when Bill was uh, on council uh, and the councils that we had known earlier on. Uh, so, uh, now I asked Howard about the tools, uh, and, and as I say, uh, he didn't say much about them, but I'm thinking, I thought, well, we, we do have the uh, legislative tool uh, and the regulations that go along with it. But I gather that regulations were not always monitored or enforced. Um, we had the example uh, the other day uh, where the Minister of Education, uh, the Honorable James Allen, uh, was being asked to uh, look at the, Winni the directions of the Winnipeg School Division, uh, act, I don't say in a separate act, but whatever mandate they are given, uh, in terms of uh, when the board goes into in camera, there were uh, allegations that it seemed to go in camera uh, far more often and inappropriately than, uh, than should be. And I know I used to be, we were called the watchdog of the Winnipeg uh, Teachers Association in a prior life. We used to term it the watch bitch because we happened to be females that were doing it. And uh, I still have the board uh, call the, the recess for coffee and cheese and biscuits and so on, and then letting the sort of dissenting members stream out first and then quickly call the meeting back and, uh, and, and make a decision. Now that wasn't exactly in camera, but it was, <laughs> it was the equivalent to it. It was real double dealing, so uh, I for one hope that progress can be made on, on that front. Without um, a degree of trust of the citizens, of the gov by the citizens in the government, um, uh, it, it's a fragile structure. Without some rules of the game uh, that are known and followed, uh, the system can easily collapse. I had that feeling when we were undergoing the long bell ringing in the French language issue. Uh, it seemed to me that uh, I, I combed through Bruno and hunting for some rule that would deal with that situation. I've since, uh, I didn't, well I found one that I thought would have entitled a vote to be called, but I've uh, queried people who were involved uh, later and found that uh, they had different versions of, of why, why the vote wasn't called. So um, it, it seems to me to make the system work uh, for the people participating, you need rules of the game. Uh, in terms of the public, uh, they, they aren't usually aware of those things. Uh, with City Hall, for example, I as a member of the public, I have no idea how, uh, what the rules are for the members of the council and the inner committees and the mayor uh, in terms of who has access to what and when. Uh, it does seem to me though that the, uh, the centralization of the decision making uh, has been excessive and I hope that it will uh, ease. The communication through the media, uh, I'm sure this is true at City Hall as it was at government, uh, the media are not always perceived as your, your friend. Uh, I for one uh, uh, entered into the political life thinking like John Stuart Mill that the best ideas emerged from the free clash of, of ideas. So I was uh, too open with the media, I would try and explain the problem we were trying to solve, what we were able to do, uh, what direction we were hopefully heading in the, in the longer term, and uh, in a sense be accountable to the people who had put me in. Well, it got me into quite a bit of hot water, <laughs> including uh, one time uh, uh, being one of the ministers who agreed to 
uh, or volunteered really to appear before a crowd of women who were pushing the, uh, the right to uh, reproductive services uh, issue. And uh, none of the other ministers who were more directly accountable would go. So, but I felt these were my friends out there and that they deserved someone to be accountable to them. So out I went and made my, made my comments, which I got through. And uh, then someone comes up and gives me a big hug. And, <laughs> Uh, and the tears started to come. Well, there was the media. <laughs> Immediately, why are you crying? You know, because they're yelling at you. <laughs> and you know, I said, uh, I just said, no, it's because it's of the uh, seriousness of the issue. Uh, and these questions, these decisions are never made simply. However, uh, I, I did consult my dear friend Paul Vogt. I hope he doesn't mind me quoting, or misquoting, I hope not, uh, you know, about uh, when certain information was released to the public. There were often um, there were, um, requests for studies that had been prepared for cabinet in the process of their coming to a decision. And the argument was that since they were publicly funded, the public should have access to them. And uh, uh, Paul said, uh, with, I think, a position that I would agree with, that the cabinet or the government should be uh, judged on the basis of decisions they make and the actions they take, not on the inner process that they follow while they're coming to that decision. Uh, it still uh, leaves open the question of timeliness. Um, if you release things uh, before, uh, well, uh, late Friday afternoon or uh, <laughs> the end of a session or when the public are uh, getting ready to go to a football game or whatever, uh, to avoid scrutiny, uh, that's not fair. So the, it's the spirit, really, of uh, being accountable and transparent appropriately that should, should govern. Um, now, the, the media attitude to government and, and their uh, transparency and accountability. Um, sometimes it, it seems, I, I, I can't say this is always true, but it seems that the uh, uh, attitude is that uh, the government is trying to hide something uh, or is being crooked. Uh, to the government, it sometimes seems that the media are out there uh, trying to get you know, drama for a story and they play St. George the Dragon in blood. And sometimes you're the St. George and sometimes you're the dragon, but unless there's blood and, and real conflict, they don't want to print it. So uh, that there's often a caution or feeling that, that you will be misrepresented. The only final comment I would have about transparency and accountability would be, uh, when you make a mistake, well, you make when your department for which you're accountable uh, when there's been some uh, uh, mistake made, trying to cover it up is, uh, is often practiced, and sometimes we don't find out as a public until much later. But the only way to handle them is to admit the mistake, empathize with the people who are affected, uh, if you can, as soon as possible, and uh, introduce remedial remedial action that you are taking or planning to take. And uh, usually the issue will uh, calm down, uh, let people in on the views, on the big picture around the issue, uh, and uh, reduce the secrets, secrecy to a minimum. So I think that's what I have to say. <coughs>